test your knowledge, protocols. Now, the following five questions are aimed at giving you a better understanding of the different protocols that are used as a part of the communication systems unit of the IPT course. So let's go through these five questions. Question one, explain the use of the SSL protocol in conjunction with the HTTP protocol. Question two, outline the function of the SMTP protocol. Question three, discuss the relationship between IP and TCP protocols. Question four, at what stage of the communication systems framework does the Ethernet protocol exist? And question five, outline the function of the token ring protocol. So I encourage you to pause your video here and at 50 seconds, we'll start going through the answers. Okay, question one, explain the use of the SSL protocol in conjunction with the HTTP protocol. Now, basically, the SSL protocol stands for Secure It Soccer Layer, which is viewed online as HTTPS because it is attached to the HTTP protocol. It uses public key encryption to ensure the secure transmission of data over the internet. The use of the HTTPS indicates that the web browser is using the HTT protocol for what it's intended to do, which is essentially communicate and retrieve web pages from web servers so they can be viewed. And then it is applying the SSL protocol for the security in the exchange of data. Question two, outline the function of the SMTP protocol. Now, the simple mail transfer protocol is used for the sending and receiving of emails. So once you actually know what the acronym means, it makes sense what it's actually used for. Although it does usually use another one of these two protocols, which is POP3 or IMAP. And they basically let users save messages in their a server's mailbox and then download them periodically from their server so it can be viewed on a device. Question three, discuss the relationship between IP and TCP protocols. Now, basically the IP protocol can work on its own because the IP P protocol is essentially addressing. Now, remember this is the communication control and addressing level of the actual communication systems framework where these two protocols are used. So IP is specifically the addressing and it identifies the specific node that data is going to be sent to. If this protocol is used alone though, there is no way to ensure that data has been received by the destination correctly. So that's then why we use the TCP protocol, which has an error checking method known as checksum, which is used to ensure that the data packets when they receive at the destination are error free. Okay, and if they are error free, then it's confirmed that they got there okay. If not, then basically the sender is uh, notified and, and has to retransmit the data. So that's often why IP and TCP are used in conjunction with each other. One is for addressing, one is making sure the TCP protocol, that data got to its destination correctly. Question four, at what stage of the communication systems framework does the Ethernet protocol exist? Basically, it's at the transmission layer. We remember that at this stage, there are two protocols that exist, which are Ethernet, and the other one is basically here in question five, the token ring protocol. And question five essentially is, outline the functions of the token ring protocol. Basically, the token ring operates by continually passing data packets known as tokens between nodes. When a node has the token, they receive all the data that is addressed to it, and they can also send messages of their own, but only while they're holding the token. The token is then passed on to the next node, and then once they've got the token, they have those same options of reading data and messages that are addressed to them, and then sending their own messages as well. So I hope these five questions have given you a better understanding of the different protocols that are used and are a part, as a part of the communication systems unit. Hope you got five out of five for these questions.